welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Kaylin. I am a second year PhD student in history and African American studies at Yale. I'm also the founder of Accepted Consulting and the co-founder of Accepted Society. So lots going on all at once as per usual, but I am finally back in New Haven. I took a little bit of a hiatus when I was back in California in order to be with family and to kind of reset for the new year but I am ready to get back into it. In this video, I'm gonna talk a little bit about my goals for 2022 and some little reflections on 2021. So it's gonna be a little bit of a longer vlog, but I just wanted to take you guys through my day and then kind of just use this as a reflection. I know that a lot of people did their kind of standalone 2021, 2022 videos in the first week of the new year. I was back at home. I didn't really wanna film there. And so I'm gonna be filming it while I'm here and I'm just gonna put it in this vlog. So that way it's just part of the larger video. I have a doctor's appointment this morning. A couple weeks ago, I went to the cardiologist and they wanna run a couple different tests. So I am getting a halter monitor put on today. I'm gonna to be wearing it for 48 hours. And then I'm gonna come back. I have some mentor calls with the members for Accepted Society today. And then I am gonna be focusing almost entirely on my comprehensive exam preparations. I have the preliminary lists that still need some editing from my committee members, but I have a plan at least with one of them to meet in person on the 24th. I'm still trying to figure out what the plan is for the other two. So I need to follow up with them and just see if we can set up a meeting on Zoom or in person, things are a little chaotic, especially with rising case numbers and whatnot. So I'm just gonna check and see what they're comfortable with. And that's what I plan on doing today. I'm gonna be at my computer most of the day as per usual, but it feels so nice to be back in my workstation. I also have a new little desk set up. I got a monitor stand that I'm really, really excited about. I've been waiting months to invest in it. And finally I decided to take the plunge. So I'm gonna show you guys the new setup a little later on, but right now I actually have to head over to the clinic, go have the monitor put on. I think I'm just gonna grab some food outside because I still haven't yet to go grocery shopping. I think I'm gonna try to do that today or I'm gonna order the food depending on what the delivery cost is. So that's the plan for today. I'm gonna to take you guys along for the ride and let's go ahead and get this day started. halter monitor put on you can kind of see the leads like right here it's a much smaller device this time last time it was like this big cumbersome thing I had to carry this iPhone shaped thing in my pocket and so it's really nice that it's so compact this time but I went ahead and stopped at my favorite coffee shop Atticus I know I'm not meant to be drinking coffee but I figured that the experiment requires to see whether or not coffee has an impact on my heart is the way I'm justifying it. I haven't been having coffee for like a month and I miss it. So I went and got myself a oat milk latte and some breakfast and I'm about to get started. But yesterday I opened up a bunch of the PR packages that I had left when I went back to California. And one of the things that I got was from this leather company called Exter and they sent me a little wallet and they also sent me this little back of the phone MagSafe wallet. And what's really cool about it is that I just have my kind of necessities in here. So I have my student ID, my driver's license, and then the two cards that I use the most. And it just snaps on to the back of the iPhone. But what's nice about this is I can just snap it off and then back on if I want to use it or if I want to leave it behind. And it's also really compact. So if I, for example, wanted to take it off of my phone, I just put this in my pocket and it's a lot smaller and more compact than carrying my big wallet which I like because I personally don't 
really like carrying bags and I don't like having to carry a bunch of things when I'm out. So this is super convenient. So thank you to them for sending that to me. It's not sponsored. They just sent it to me in PR and I really like it. This is super useful. I am now about to get started on my computer work for the morning and I am going to show you guys my new setup. So I'm going to quickly just turn the camera around so you can see what my new setup looks like. I do want to do a full like desk tour type situation, but that may come in a different video. I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys what the new monitor stand looks like. All right, so this is the new setup. I've gotten a ton of questions about it on Instagram, but here I have my desktop computer. So I have my iMac and then I have my new monitor. I mean, I have everything linked down below, but I got this new monitor stand, which is a lot taller than my previous stand and actually holds both monitors so that way they're even up top, which I like so much more. And this is from Grove Made. I absolutely love this company. I wanna buy everything that they sell, except they are a little bit pricey and I wanted something that was good quality and that was also a good color for my apartment. So I got this walnut monitor stand. It's huge and it's got a ton of storage space as you can see. So I have my notebooks, I have my glasses, my computer under here, my hard drives under here planner, notebooks, journal, my remotes, everything. So if it's everything perfectly to the right, I have my coffee to the left. I have my camera set up and all of the cameras and things and my oat milk latte, which is the most important of today. I am just really loving my new setup. I have found, especially since going home, how much my workstation means to my workflow. I was having a really hard time staying focused and getting my work done when I was back in California and having my workstation here. I ended up sitting at my computer yesterday for I think like 12 hours because I was just doing work and getting things done and it didn't even feel that long just because it felt so nice to be back in my own space. And this is not to say that you need dual monitors or a monitor stand, et cetera, in order to be productive. It's really about setting up the workspace that works for you, the way that your brain functions, the way that you feel you can get your most work done and stay focused. And I absolutely love the workstation that I've built for myself. So. I feel like I never want to leave my apartment, but it just feels so nice to have the setup that I feel the most useful and that I can get my work done and I can see everything that I want to have open. And it's just so, so nice. I am really enjoying the new setup. I'm going to go ahead and get this day started. I have a bunch of work I need to do. I have a mentor call at, I think, 1130. And then I'm going to join Danielle's accountability workshop that she's hosting with Accepted Society. So, busy day, but let's go ahead and get right into it. All right, I just got a couple things in the mail that I wanted to show you guys because I got some new accessories for my new camera. So I have the Sony a7 III. I've been wanting this camera for ages and I finally got the full frame camera. This is a used version. It was a gift and a very, very wonderful extravagant gift, obviously. And I still need to buy lenses and things for it, but very excited because I got some things that will allow me to use it for live streaming. So, I'm gonna go ahead and open these up. So first of all, I got an adapter. This will allow me to essentially plug in the camera and keep the battery running while I am doing my live stream sessions. So hopefully that will improve the quality a little bit. So if you notice, let me know. I'm also gonna switch cameras a little later in this video. So I'll show you guys the difference. The second thing that I got is this vlogging flip screen thing. So I was watching a YouTube video and another vlogger was using this. So the a7 III doesn't have a flip out screen, which I thought would be a really big deal, but I found this thing that you can actually mount onto the camera. It was only like 20 bucks. So it essentially has this mirror in it that allows you to see the screen. So basically take it and you attach it to the hot shoe mount here. And then what you do is essentially have the screen 
as so. And now you can see yourself in the little mirror. So that's really cool. I'm gonna be playing around with that because okay, currently it's like really magnified. Okay, so now we are set to go. So I have that, really exciting. And then the last thing is perhaps the most exciting, which is I finally got myself a full and complete set of the Harry Potter series. I've never actually read all the Harry Potter books. I know it's a travesty. The reason being that when I was a kid, my sister read all of them and she read them like in sequence. And I just never ended up reading them because she always had them in her room. And I finally figured that it was time that I owned my own set. And with the reunion posted on HBO Max, I was absolutely sobbing and beside myself the other night while watching it. And I just wanted to relive my childhood and get myself a set. I know I'm technically preparing for comprehensive exams, but this will be my fun reading in addition to that. So very excited that I have this set. I'm gonna go ahead and do a little cleanup and then I'm gonna do some video prep because I have to film a video for a brand and then I'm gonna be working on comprehensive exam readings. So that's my plan. And let's go ahead and keep the day rolling. later I filmed the TikToks that I wanted to. I am currently working on trying to get the camera set up. I have to download some software onto my computer in order to use it as a live streaming camera, but very happy with how it's all turning out. But I wanted to take this time right now to chat a little bit about my resolutions of sorts. So I am not necessarily calling them resolutions, I'm gonna say that they're primarily goals because it's not something that's a huge change. And so I'm using this time in order to think about the things that I want to improve upon. One thing that I don't like about resolutions is when they take kind of a negative connotation. So for example, I will not order out or I will not do this. It feels very restrictive to me. And so for my 2022 goals, I'm focusing on the things that I want to bring into my life and the things that I want to be focusing on. So I have a video coming up next week that you guys should keep an eye out for and turn on your notifications for because it is going to be my updated Notion video. And in this, I'm basically going over the whole format that I have for my new dashboard. This includes all of my goal planning for 2022. This year, my word is flow. So what I mean by the word flow is thinking about the flow state. One thing that I think about when I'm studying is that I want to get into that productive flow state where you're really focused and you're really kind of invested in whatever it is that you're currently doing. This is something I'm really good at for certain things, but I'm not super good at for others. And so this year I really want to focus on kind of time blocking my day and really getting into that flow state at different points of time. But a couple of my quote unquote intentions or goals is that I want to pass my comprehensive exams, which I'll be taking next fall. I am going to do research in London and at Oxford this summer. I want to grow a successful team at Accepted Consulting. I really wanna focus on scaling and focusing on being more of a manager myself rather than being someone so on the ground. This last year, I took on too many clients, honestly, and while I managed it, I really wanna focus on my PhD this year, and so I'm really gonna be focusing on taking more of a managerial and leadership role at Accepted consulting and accepted society. So that way I can focus on my PhD and make sure that I am building a team that is sustainable and that can help the clients at volume that we need and that we can continue to scale without it being so much of the pressure on me because at this point in time, I still take about 80% of the clients and it makes sense because it's a business that started just with me. I started doing the consulting thing and working with students back when it was just myself and I was doing it freelance as a side hustle, but now that it's a standalone business, I really wanna focus on the other consultants taking more of a role. I also really wanna focus on public speaking this year. This is something that I've been wanting to do for a while. I'm not the best public speaker, but it's something that I wanna work on. And when I get to talk about things that I'm passionate about, especially the pathway from community college and going to graduate school and being able to pursue what it is that you are truly passionate about, those things I've 
feel very convicted about and I find it very easy to talk about even in a public setting. And so that's something I really wanna focus on. The next thing is that I will delegate and trust my team to do their best. I am a control freak. It is really difficult for me to relinquish control, especially of something as meaningful to me as accepted consulting, but I need to trust my team. I now have an incredible group of women that work with me and I just need to trust that they're gonna do their best job and that I can trust them to manage the projects that I once upon a time had complete control over. And lastly, I said, I will focus my energy on joy, building lasting relationships and allowing the impossibility to become reality. I am not really setting definitive numbers or expectations on the year of 2022. I just really want to focus on, like I said, that flow state really being present and really being focused when I am working on a particular task and scaling and also focusing on my relationships. I think that's something that really suffered in 2021 was that I was really focused on certain relationships, certain friendships and business relationships, but I did not spend time with my friends outside of if it was for work. So for example, I spent a lot of time with Danielle and I spent a lot of time with Katie and Janelle and Chloe, but it's almost always over Zoom and we're working together. And so this year I am really making a dedicated effort to building relationships outside of just my work and on being social and going out and all of those things. Obviously COVID prevents a lot of that, but I'm gonna try to make it more of an emphasis this year. And part of that is by having a weekly schedule. As you'll see in the Notion video, I have basically laid out what my perfect week looks like. And I have essentially scheduled in time that I will be trying to move my body when I will be cooking and when I'll be seeing friends, when I'll be working on accepted stuff versus when I'll be preparing for comprehensive exams, when I have meetings with professors, all of those things. So that is something that I'm gonna be sticking to. Chanel's helping me, she's my assistant and I absolutely adore her and she is my lifesaver because she really helps me kind of stick to the plan that I've set in place. And so I am only gonna be doing client work three hours per week. And so if you wanna work with me in the year of 2022, get on my calendar ASAP because return clients are going to be the priority for me to work with and new clients are gonna be pushed to others on the team. I really wanna help as many people as I can, but I also need to focus on my own goals. And right now the priority is my research and on passing my comprehensive exams. So I have to read so, 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 so many books over the next couple months. And so actually over the next 12 months, and I really need to be focused on that. With that being said, I am gonna do a video on comprehensive exams and like what that actually looks like because when I entered the PhD, I had no freaking clue. I didn't know how many books was on a reading list. I still don't really know how to prepare. I have a plan and we're gonna try it out and see how it works. And if it doesn't work quite well, then I'll change course. But I'm essentially taking all the advice that I've been given from older PhD students that are further along in their studies and kind of formed that into a plan of my own. And I will be doing a video on that very soon. But 2022 is really about taking the building blocks that I've established, especially in my business and with YouTube and whatnot, and really focusing on consistency and that flow state. So that's my little 2022 goal session that I wanted to chat with you guys about. But now I'm actually going to jump onto some mentor calls with the Accepted Society members. And then I have a call with Alani, who is an accepted consulting consultant. She works on lab sciences and we're just gonna do a little goals meeting and just talk about her previous clients and things that we can help her with and things that she would like to learn and all of those things, because I think it's important to have a one-on-one -on -one relationship with my team and also to build community within the team. So that way we all feel like we can kind of lean on each other and collaborate with different clients and whatnot. So I'm gonna have a meeting with her around five. I'm gonna cook dinner around six and then I'll be working for the rest of the evening. So that's my plan. I will check in with you all in a little while.
hours later, I have made dinner. I got a bunch of my work done. I'm hitting a bit of a lull because I haven't been taking naps the last couple days, which if you've been following my channel for any period of time, you know how important my naps are. However, I have decided to make myself a lot of cake from Trader Joe's and enjoy myself. So I am heating up lava cake and then I'm gonna be working with Chanel for a little while. I'm gonna try to not stay up super, super late because I would like to wake up at a semi-reasonable hour tomorrow. So no more caffeine tonight and trying to get wrapped up by midnight. So I have one document to review and then I'm gonna read. So that's my entire plan for this evening. And yeah, I'll check in in a little while. We're gonna, I'll do a little recap on my reading for comps. I'm currently reading Jennifer Morgan's Laboring Women. And one of my plans for the comprehensive exam stage of this PhD is I'm going to start making review videos because you guys have been asking for those for what feels like forever. And now that I'm actually having to read all of these books super thoroughly, I figured that doing book review videos would be a good way for me to practice for comprehensive exams. So you guys get to join this journey with me, but first, lava cake. camera and I'm very curious to see what you think about the image quality because obviously this is a much nicer camera but I'm still kind of playing around with lenses and things. I definitely need to buy one that is a bit wider for vlogging and is definitely a little bit more compact because the lens I have on it currently is just a monstrosity. But I am currently digging through Jennifer Morgan's Laboring Women, Reproduction and Gender in New World Slavery. Jennifer Morgan is a massive inspiration of mine for having gone to graduate school and her concepts of reproduction, her article on particle or Ventrum is quite literally the catalyst of why I ended up pursuing the project that I did and why I'm so interested in reproductive labor and the reproductive economy of colonial America. And this book is one that I've read before. I read it in an independent study with one of my old mentors when I was at UCLA. But in all fairness, I think I'm reading it with a very different eye now because the types of notes that I'm taking are just a bit different. So as you could see in that clip that I showed you, I annotate as I go. But essentially what I'm looking for is when an argument is made, when a theoretical framework is introduced, or if there's some kind of terminology or other types of connections that are being made that I don't want to forget. And so I will highlight and just give myself like a little note in the margin. So for example, where she says this book argues that as slave owners contemplated women's reproductive potential with greed and opportunism, they utilized both outrageous images and callous indifference, indifferent strategies to ultimately inscribe enslaved women as racially and culturally different. The sentence continues, but what I put in the margin is main argument. So that way I remember to return to it and add that to my notes. And as I go through the comprehensive exam process and kind of figure out what works and what doesn't, I will show you guys my note taking process. 
I also have like a little note here where she makes an argument about sex ratios and demography and how that kind of plays into the lived experiences, especially enslaved communities and ways that sex ratios in relation to the slave trade actually had implications on the ground and those types of things. So I am still kind of digging through this. I don't think I obviously will finish this book this evening. I'm just kind of getting a start and trying to figure out what methods work for me to read a little bit more quickly because I am a very, very slow reader and I have hundreds of books that I need to read by next year. So trying to figure out what system is actually going to be beneficial. But I think I'm actually gonna go ahead and call it a night and get ready for tomorrow because it's gonna be a long day and I want to make sure that I have enough energy to really dig into this properly. I also would like to move on to some of the other books on my reading list. I am gonna make an actual full reading list available on my own website, I think, once the lists are finalized. They're not complete yet. So once they're finalized, I will make them public so you guys can read along with me if you so choose. But I'm gonna go ahead and call it. So thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I know it's a little bit all over the place. I'm starting to try to get back into the swing of things. Let me know if you enjoyed the camera quality and how you all are doing. I hope you're doing well. Give this video a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button if you are yet to subscribe. And I will stop rambling now. See you all next time. Bye.